And like usual, like you had to watch a couple extra movies, like you said. I had trouble narrowing mine down. <laughs> well, you watch so many like on-demand ones, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like that's VOD. That's some pretty easy pickings there. <laughs> Even with, yeah, like so th I do want to mention some, like I guess honorable mentions at the beginning okay. of it because honorable uh, mentions are probably going to be my list. <laughs> oh right, like so. No, mine is like. I could have had 20 and they all would have been serviceable enough. Mm. I looked at like a list I had written down of, yeah, it was probably about 20 movies and I didn't know which ones to cut. I really mm. didn't. I had to be, I, at one point I thought, do I categorize these by genres and be like, oh, here's some horror movies, here's some comedies. Then I was like, okay, let me take out some of these. <laughs> since, since there is a lot back in theaters now, I was like, Maybe I'll go easier on some of the VOD movies. Mm. And also ones that I did get some kind of so bad it's good enjoyment out of. Mm. So taking some off the list was like Grim Cuddy. The one, the Hulu horror oh, movie. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> I never saw that one, but man, it just... That's another kind of like meme exploitation kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah, it is because it's a ghost that feeds on parents' fear, <laughs> and it ends with an epilogue where the girl is wrapping things up by doing ASMR. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't regret watching this. There was another one called Spirits Revenge that was about a ghost that haunts adulterers. Um, <laughs> there was one, uh, <laughs> Redeeming Love, was a crazy. Uh, faith-based movie I went to go see that was like a western biblical romance but with like the sleaze factor of an old canon film <laughs> that was okay. running the bases oh I saw your view on that man that that's not on there really it's it isn't because I did get some enjoyment out of it okay. and that enjoyment was the director's son getting mad at me for not liking it <laughs> <laughs> no it definitely looked like a movie that was like a so bad it's Fun I kind didn't. Of I didn't regret seeing that in the theater. <laughs> it had been a while since I'd seen a persecution movie like that in theaters, so I'm like, you know what? I'm all right with this being back. <laughs> then there was things that were all kind of just the same movie, like The Killing Tree, hmm. or the one about Krampus, or the one about Jack Frost. Humpty Dumpty, all oh, that. Yeah, yeah, the Humpty. <laughs> You're keeping more track of them than I am. I was like, I just oh, remember right, the, box the Humpty cover. Dumpty one, the, <laughs> the Humpty Dumpty one, the Nutcracker one. The Nutcracker one was one of the better ones. <laughs> so those I kept off, but those are like my honorable mentions. And ironically, you didn't do the ones that are like the most talked about, like the Mean One or like Blood and Honey. Wait, did Blood and Honey come out? I forget. That one hasn't come out yet. Oh, okay, but the Mean One you didn't do, the Grinch one. I didn't see the Grinch one. Um, it wasn't... I, I think it's out there. I don't know, it was on all the ones where I was looking for worst of oh, <laughs> movies. That was always one that popped I, up there. I wanted to. I wanted to go see it, but it wasn't playing anywhere around here. Like, it was, okay, only, it okay. was only playing in the city. Okay. And at least at the time, I couldn't find it streaming anywhere on mm. VOD. But, but I'm, I'm definitely going to check that out at yeah, some point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but do um, you want to go to your uh, number 10? Yeah, I, I'll just give a heads up again. These are... <laughs> Because I didn't see a ton of movies, at least enough to get as good a list as him. So <laughs> these are worse, but worse usually means meh at yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Uh, with that said, I am putting this at the bottom, so don't fucking kill me. Uh, Avatar The Way of Water. Oh. <laughs> um, I gave it two out of four stars when I yeah. reviewed it. Only for the technology and the visuals. Yeah. Which is still something. That's like, you know, 50% mm -hmm. right there just for the visuals and the technology. But it is amazing. It's yeah. totally amazing. And I'm just like, wow, that was really something. I think the script is so insulting. Like, right. just how much it repeats the same stuff from before. And my big thought is, well, what's he going to rip off now that... You know, the Avatar was the first one was the biggest movie, you know, for a while. Yeah. What's he get ripped off? He just ripped off the exact same thing. And Orca the Killer Whale. Yeah. A little Orca in there. No, we evolved from Save the Rainforest to Save the Whales. And yeah. And just these tired 90s environmental cliches. I mean, from the 90s. And I guess that stuff gets to me the most because I don't know about you. 
I don't, I don't know if people repressed this or where we have so much evidence for it, just this was crammed down our throats for so long growing up. The save the rainforest, oh, save yeah, the yeah. whales, and they're not even like bad messages or anything. Mm -hmm. They were just, every, it was like a fad. It was the fad message. Yeah. And there was no subtlety, subtlety to it whatsoever. And I like when these messages are gotten across with subtlety. Yeah. You know, uh, even something as generic, I always bring it up, the old Sonic Saturday morning cartoon has like a weird subtle environmental message to yeah. it you know that you wouldn't really think of but it is there and I like if Sonic can be subtle what is Avatar doing you know mm. what I mean I, I thought the characters are very generic the um plot again all recycled from the last movie and it pissed me off because it tricked me yeah I thought this was going to be the time where Cameron's like well we got rid of the humans what am I going to do? What am I going to do to, like, grow this world and expand this world? Maybe we should just focus on the Na'vi and what happens in this world and maybe feuding tribes or warring tribes. You know, really do some actual world building instead of, oh, that's a horse, that's a, you know, tribe that was shit on for years and years. This is white man. This is, You know, like, just actually do some original world building mm -hmm. And for the first maybe five minutes, I thought I was getting there. Like, okay, I'm enjoying this. I'm liking this world. I'm liking how far they've come. Humans pop back. It's right back to square one. <laughs> they don't even go after the same shit. The Inoptanium, wherever the fuck that was. Yeah, it was just yeah. like, yeah, no, we're just um, getting something over there in the water now. Why? Well, because the movie has to be about water. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we have the trees and forests and stuff like that. And the next one's going to be about dirt. I'm sure. No, it's about fire. Yeah, so, all right, so I think that was a troll move. Did he actually confirm it was about fire? Was he just making a joke? That's a good question. Now, I'll say I thought, this. I thought I heard it was about fire. Now, I'll say this. If it is about that, and it was a different director, I, I would love the shit out of that. Imagine, like, fire Navi, like, sort of these flame, these red mm -hmm. ones, and they kind of have, like, these flames on them or something like that. That'd be really cool. But if it's James Cameron, it's just going to be... The first film again, <laughs> exactly the same. It, yeah, I agree. I gave it a B plus, and it w was kind of like you giving it two stars, where it's like I'm aware I'm giving this a B plus because I like the techno. I like it as a theme park attraction. Yes, like, and I do get that. I yeah. get why people are going back to it. Certainly, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be something that I would enjoy as much if I was watching it on television. Mm. So when people go to it and they don't like it for those reasons, I completely get it because the script isn't great but it did if you're won over by basically the equivalent of going to a theme park and seeing one of those 3d attractions and that's and you feel you got your money's worth for that you probably will because i did while being aware this only works in theaters <laughs> yeah but i mean there is i think it's because these cliches the most i had to grow up with them I thought they were always going to be with us. Man, these stupid cliches are just not going to leave, and they're going to be hammered in and so, you know, lame. And then they kind of disappeared. It was a fad. Cool. And the fact that Cameron's coming back, thinking he has a really original idea, yeah. and then saying, I'm bringing this back, because this was a good thing from the 90s to bring back. And it's like, that's when mm -hmm. we should have left dead. You know what <laughs> I mean? So it's like, I think it's those cliches that just get the most under my skin. Well, it's actually a pretty good pairing with my number 10 that also has water in it, and also inadvertently brings back a lot of cliches, you would have a field day with this movie. It's a movie called The King's Daughter. Oh, I remember seeing it. Is that the mermaid one? It's the mermaid okay. one, where Pierce Brosnan is the king who is obsessed with finding and capturing this mermaid so he can, if I'm remembering right, steal its essence so he can live forever. Laura and I went to go see this in the theater, and I'm watching this like, this feels like it's like a holdover from early 2010s YA movie tropes and effects. And then it turns out that's exactly what it is. The movie was made eight or nine years ago. Oh, wow. Okay. And for whatever reason, like legal stuff, I'm not sure, but it stayed on the shelf for a long time, almost a decade, eventually went out in theaters and seeing it like that is kind of fascinating and that you're watching this lost film from this genre of YA movies from the early 2010s hmm. that they don't make a lot of anymore. Now here's one to remind you why. Well, and ironically, they just waited an extra year. You know how we got something like four Pinocchio films this year? It's like if they waited, yeah. we could have had at least two mermaid films mm -hmm. this year. It's a shame they didn't wait one more year. Yeah, there'll be that Little Mermaid. There'll be like the knockoffs coming out about it. <laughs> Little I Mermaid, a 
true story. That it's like Polly Shore is the mermaid. I'm like, that would be my favorite yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> release it. <laughs> my number nine is uh, Thor Love and Thunder, which I feel should make you happy because I think you got a lot of shit for not liking Ragnarok, right? I did. I didn't get shit for not liking Thor Love and Thunder. Because it was terrible. Like, um, and, and, and I feel bad because, again, I guess I shouldn't say it's terrible because there are some good things in it. Honestly, the stuff... I assume would be bad was okay. Natalie Portman was actually an okay uh, yeah, Lady yeah. Thor. Uh, and I liked the way, even though it was kind of rushed, I liked the way they worked in her becoming that. I liked the way the hammer splits into Shar. She's got some cool mm -hmm. moves and everything. Um, Kat Dennings didn't destroy the movie. She was actually she okay. Yeah. Uh, but when, when it wants to be a Thor movie, I really like it. When Ever it wants to be a comedy, it just doesn't know when to stop. It's so out of place. It's so painful. It's so repetitive. It's so dated. And it's not needed. That's what pisses me off. Like, I think this movie could have very naturally been told straightforward. I mean, one of the characters, I, I, we go a little bit into spoilers, one of the characters is dying. And it's like, well, we gotta get a little beat bop joke in here we gotta do some oh, ice cream God. with the infinity gauntlet yeah. there which is as everyone has pointed out like wait isn't that like essentially a terrorist attack that happened yeah. and stuff like that and people die and we're making ice cream <laughs> out of it um and it just never felt appropriate and i feel like the humor would have worked fine if they just had a funny moment when it felt like there should be a funny moment because mm -hmm. it's a weird universe they created there and i feel like no, I know where you're coming from with Ragnarok. I do yeah. feel like the humor didn't bother me, but it was where I was starting to become aware of the Marvel, you know, kind of formula with the mm -hmm. jokes. Okay, at this point, I had joke and stuff like that. But it made me laugh, so I didn't mind. And it was so trippy, I didn't mind. But this one was finally where somebody just pushed way too hard, and it hurt the film a lot. It was like... Um one of those sequels that's doing everything people liked about the other one, but to an obnoxious extent. Mm -hmm. Like, th these four movies, not speaking of quality, just speaking of weirdly how they are as this, of these four movies, almost follows the pattern of the Batman movies, where you've got the first I one. I can't see that. Then the yeah. second one that is like the extreme of the first one, then they're like, well, okay, let's make this lighter and more colorful, more comic booky. Then you've got Ragnarok, and then you've got this that is the extreme of that. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a fair way on that, okay. Um, yeah, and I, I think what angered me about it, again, though, I think I gave it two out of four, guys, and two out of yeah. four. The, the, like, bottom here are mostly gonna be two out of four <laughs> movies. Oh, sure. Uh, but what bothered me is that you could so easily see how this movie could work. Man, I like Christian Bale as that he bad guy. Why couldn't we see. More of him. Yeah. I like seeing Jane go through the whole thing with the cancer and stuff and figuring out, you know, man, the more she has this power, the more it's ironically sucking out life, but it's giving her, you know, life as well. Like, isn't that fascinating? But it's just a conversation or two. It's not much. All of that you could focus on. And it's strange enough that comedy could organically work its way in, but yeah. instead they force all these jokes that just aren't needed and are so annoying. <laughs> that, that movie's not on my list, but... Thank you. <laughs> I do not like that movie at all. <laughs> I was I was seriously like, I was trying to guess what would be on your list, and a couple of them are like, I hope that's not, or I hope that is on his list because it's not on mine. That was one of them. Oh, good. And there's another that I'm sure will probably be on yours. Probably. Later. I think it will be. <laughs> I think you, yeah, we probably know which one. Yeah. <laughs> but no, my number nine is um, Hex. This was a. I don't get those. Speaking of like movies that also. Again, there's a lot on mine actually that feel like holdovers. This one almost starts out feeling like this was written in the early 90s. Is this part of the X trilogy? Like, no. this is the one. Because X is in the title. Oh, and no, no. X, no, okay. Those, those made H my best list. X. <laughs> yeah, they, they screwed this one up on the third entry. <laughs> like, no, this. It starts out where it's about these. Um, skydivers and they're in a plane and they're talking to the pilot at one point and they say to the girl like 
dude, lift up your shirt, that means the pilot will take us higher. And like, she does, and then the plane starts shaking, and the pilot's like, whoa, sorry, guess God wanted to see them titties. This is a horror movie, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, it's typical <laughs> horror movie dialogue setup. So, like, what happens is, when they jump out of the plane, they perform a haunted plane jump. That like <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. What does this, that mean? It means this movie's like drop zone crossed with Final Destination, where they're performing a a jump that is cursed, and so one of them <laughs> disappears in midair, and then the rest of it is basically death from Final Destination trying to kill all of them that survived this jump. <laughs> You're selling me on this. Yeah, honestly, honestly, this is this is kind of in the category of like it's on my worst list but see it like so and then it tries getting twisty at the end like it wants to be a david lynch movie where you're not sure if certain things happen or if this was like a setup if it was something else i'm like okay come on movie like don't try to leave it up to interpretation like <laughs> this <laughs> x <laughs> a haunted skydiving jump that's I hadn't seen that before. No, it's, it's like, new. It feels like yeah. something that will have been done in the 90s or like, like the late 90s going through the early 2000s. Everybody was skydiving, but then like everything was getting haunted in the late 90s, like yeah. Final Destination. So yeah, if you could like cross those two. That's what this is. Like it did feel, it, I would be shocked if this wasn't written like 30 years ago. Uh, and then they made it and didn't change a damn thing about it. I'm like, respect, right on. No need to update this shit. We don't have the time or budget to do that. <laughs> Number eight, I felt a little bad putting it on there, but it's like, it, yeah, no, I gotta. Uh, I did put Rob Zombie's The Monsters on there. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. But it, to me, it is kind of like Batman and Robin where it's like man I cannot sit and watch this all the way through uh -huh. but individual scenes are so crazy and so awkward and so bizarrely done they do make me laugh yeah so I feel like any I, I always say in Batman and Robin I feel like you gotta watch like three minutes, start watching three minutes and like the humor of how crazy it is will rub off on you. With the Musters, it's like one minute. Yeah. Like just, you know, nothing too insane in one minute in the way somebody says something or the mm -hmm. way something is shot or the pacing or the delivery, the visuals, any of that. And it's so odd and it makes me laugh really hard. Like I feel like this would be a great one of those videos where it's like the Munsters out of context. Oh, kind yeah, of yeah. Like, if those don't exist already with this movie. Um, but yeah, after five, ten minutes, I'm like, I cannot stand this. <laughs> but I feel bad because, on the other hand, Rob Zombie's The Monsters. Isn't this exactly what you thought you would get? More or less. Like, I don't know. When I hear those names combined, this is kind of the movie I thought yeah. it would be. Some choices, I'm like, all right, it's a little head scratching you know even for rob zombies the monsters yeah. but i'm like i think of the halloween movies i'm like that he did i'm like yeah okay he definitely did some weird shit there too and he, mm. he made a choice he stuck with it but it doesn't work and it does get annoying <laughs> i was okay with it i didn't love it i, I gave it like a b minus i mm. think but i but i liked it okay i could see why it didn't have good reviews mm. there what for me there was something weirdly comforting about the movie in that it, it did kind of feel like an entire movie made out of host segments of mm -hmm. a late night horror host show. Yeah. I kind of like that about it. Yeah, and again, that's why when people take a look at the look of it, it's like, but it's Rob Zombie's The Monsters. Yeah. Like, if you had a problem from day one, I, you know, Rob Zombie directing The Monsters, I'm so angry. Fair. I get that. Sure, yeah. But all the people are like, oh, he's a Monsters fan. This is going to be good. He's going to put his stamp on it. That's kind of what I'm looking for when I see some call from mm -hmm. Zombies the Monsters. Um, you know, again, it's that I don't think it works as a film, as an hour and a half presentation, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> It might have my favorite ending of the year, though. And then it just ends. Like, do you remember? No, my, my favorite bit is that, yeah, there's like, we're rich! And they start jumping yeah. up and down. But my we're favorite rich. is the grandpa just rocking back and forth, pointing at the chick. <laughs> <laughs> and again, out of context, that's hilarious. That yeah, is it so is funny. It, 
ended like a, like a sitcom. A sitcom where this is not going to be addressed in the next yeah. episode. <laughs> was like, we're rich! We're rich! <laughs> the end! Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, we're done here. <laughs> I, got, I got a big laugh out of that. I'm like, bravo. <laughs> I feel like everybody who watches the movie and even hates it always has to bring up, but this was funny. Either this actor or this mm. scene. And it's never the same thing. It's always something different. And again, I think... People are acknowledging there's something in there that is going to tickle you a little bit because it's just so bizarre. Yeah. And I do respect it for that, but it does not work as an hour and a half movie. Oh, and it was even longer, too. I think it was like hour 50 or no, something. And that, I, so it works I, even I, less as that. I agree. <laughs> like, it, it, would, it, it had no business being over like 90 minutes. <laughs> um, which this movie wasn't. This movie was if you take out the ending credits, it's 70 minutes long. The Netflix Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No kidding. Did you see it? Or is it? Oh, is well, it going to you in a couple gonna, numbers here? Is it going to have an appearance? <laughs> it was a very cynical film, basically trying to do that 2018, 2019 Halloween movie that came out, mm. where it's we're bringing back the character from the first one. She's older now. She's kind of this survivalist living by herself. Only in this, she's barely in the movie. She disappears, only kind of comes and goes every now and then. Shows up in the climax to be a dumbass. So what we're left with is a collection of characters that it does the thing that I don't that a lot of lesser slasher movies do. They go out of their way to make their characters so unlikable and so obnoxious that you want to see them die. To a point where I couldn't even tell who I was supposed to be rooting I know. for. Because they're coming into this town, you know, this sort of influencer group. Yeah. And but like the people around the town are kind of, you know, from oh, stupid kid. And, you know, it's obviously a town that has this cursed history and yeah. stuff like that. So I'm watching them kind of go back and forth between being sympathetic and being crazy unlikable. Yeah. And I just didn't know, like, what point am I even supposed to get yeah. from this? There's one set, as all I'll say about it, because, again, it might pop up again, uh, where they have this girl who survived a school shooting and this dude who lives there has got a lot of guns. He lives in a dangerous town. It's a famously dangerous yeah. town. And there's, I think, maybe one scene where they start to sit down, they start to just talk as people. Mm -hmm. And even then, just barely, because I think even she's like, oh, how's it feel to be so nihilistic, having all these chemicals go in the air? Oh, you shut up. Because <laughs> that's what someone that survives a school shooting is going to talk like. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but at some point, they start to actually talk like people, and I thought, yeah. man, wouldn't this be an interesting pairing? And I thought maybe they were going to do that. And that's, that was the whole idea of mm -hmm. this setup. And then they drop oh, it they get rid of really that. quick. They get rid Super of that Super quick. quick. Quick in a way that feels like there's a lot of deleted scenes. Because mm -hmm. there's things where it, it really feels like there's more to this that was shot. That being one of them. The stuff with Sally being another thing. Um, I, I, the one part that I was kind of okay with is the has like the worst line in the movie. The part in the bus where the kid mm. is like, come, uh, come, yeah, near, yeah. come near us and you're canceled or whatever. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That set piece that happens after was pretty cool, was pretty well done. And, and that's, <laughs> that's the best part of the movie, but even that's, maybe because I'm thinking back to the original, I'm like, oh, this could have been, you, gone even further, been even scarier, been sure. really. But I mean, it's, it, it's not a bad scene. It, mm. it, it's competently done, it's got some fun kills. It, it did. It, you know, so it's like, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's what it was. Yeah. It was sort of like, okay, there's at least this. This movie still sucks, but there's that. And it made no sense that that he stayed hidden for this long, mm -hmm. that she's never been able to find him, that this has just gone on for 50 years. Like, like everybody knows it. about this town. Like, yeah. oh, stay away, stay away. And... and <laughs> she never thought, you know, maybe she'll look around here a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven is uh, Lightyear. Huh, the, yeah. Uh, Buzz Lightyear movie. Um, this should have easily been an entertaining movie. Yeah. You don't even have to try mm -hmm. to make Buzz Lightyear entertaining. And many people have made him entertaining in, obviously, the Toy Story movies. I mean, we talk about the cartoon we saw, which I haven't seen a ton of, but, like, 
what I have seen is exactly what I want to see out of Buzz Lightyear. Mm. It's fun, and, and it's tropey as hell, but in a way that we want to see these tropes, and they exploit it in a fun way, and they're going around shooting aliens, going to different galaxies. He's got a little, you know, team of rangers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Some of them are weird and alien. I think they're all aliens. In this one, they're stuck on a planet. All humans. They're stuck on this planet. The planet is crazy boring. Mm -hmm. He keeps trying to help them get off the planet by doing the space thing where he keeps going more and more into the future, but he stays the same age. And eventually they're like, it, it's done, we're pulling the plug on it, but I'm trying to remember what the hell happened. Somehow robots are trying to take over this place that we don't really care that much about, mm -hmm. or this planet, because again, it's boring as hell. And he meets these people that are all just one joke, one note. I don't remember anything about them except one guy wants to look for a pen. Mm -hmm. One person wants to just blow shit up. And they all want to matter, and they just have this one quirk. And then the big twist about who Zerg is, which, just in case you haven't seen it, I won't reveal, but he's not Zerg. Uh, and <laughs> it's so last minute and so stupid that even if you just ripped the title Lightyear off of it, which I think was the idea, I don't think this was written as a Lightyear mm. movie, uh, it still wouldn't make much sense. It would feel out of place, because this character kind of <laughs> just pops out of nowhere, and even this idea, yes, there's kind of going forward to the future, but the way this is done is so out of nowhere mm. and is so not fulfilling <laughs> at all, and does not create a good villain or an interesting idea. Even the conclusion they come to at the end, I go, really? You're just gonna be okay with all this? Mm. I feel like there's a lot of other things you should, yeah, you adapt, but dude, <laughs> you should be trying to maybe still make contact with other people, yeah. with your home and stuff like that. Just giving up like that seems strange to me. I guess that's the ending. Sorry, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that, sorry. You, you weren't going to see it. You didn't see it. Admit it. You, you saw it. it. It's lost in space. <laughs> You've already seen this movie. <laughs> or you saw it on Disney Plus out yeah. of morbid curiosity because nobody saw it in the theater. And it annoys me because they went with this. I think they went with Strange World and they went with one other movie that didn't do that well. Um, I can't remember. But they left out Turning Red from theaters. They left out Luca oh, from theaters. Yeah. Movies I would have loved to have seen on the big screen. I would adore seeing Luca mm -hmm. on the big screen. And instead, mm -hmm. they went for these films because they think they they thought they had the name recognition yeah. on them. And it didn't work because people could see from my way this was going to be boring. It wasn't going to be what we enjoyed about the character and the world and stuff. So, yeah, the uh, not a fan. <laughs> the funniest part about it was trying to buy that this was Andy's favorite movie. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it this. It kind of works like a 1995 adaptation that it doesn't really get the source material down. Oh, it changes stuff mean, yeah. to a ridiculous degree, and then the world is kind of like dark and grimy and boring and doesn't capture yeah. the imagination of the original. So there's that. <laughs> right? Like, it's like, yeah, there's like, there's plenty of bad stuff we've all liked when we were kids, but all of that stuff you could kind of point to and be like, well, I, I can see why. It's, it's something might be very colorful or very mm -hmm. energetic. Um, there might be some very memorable characters, or at least very cartoony characters in them. This, no, it's really flat, monotonous, boring. It didn't even make sense that this movie would inspire the number one toy yeah. at that time because they're selling every other toy but Buzz Lightyear in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, how would they like work that to then make like the show story or whatever with Zerg and Lightyear and stuff? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, it, yeah, I don't know. It definitely felt honestly what it was like, hey, let's take something, uh, an IP that's popular. Let's try to reinvent it, recreate it for, you know, make it more adult, I guess, maybe, mm. and it just completely backfired. Yeah, I, I was bored watching it in the theater. I, I did, it, it's not on my list, but I didn't like it either. Uh, mine is um, The Bubble. I didn't see it. It looked bad. It was honestly, like, it's not in my top five or anything, or bottom five or anything, but it was easily one of the hardest movies to sit through. Mm. It was a collection of everything that a bad comedy nowadays is, or you could point to about it. The plot is good. The plot is about a group of actors who were trying to make a movie during COVID, and they're all stuck in this, like, mansion or this this castle together. Oh, I saw this Glass Onion. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I didn't even love Glass Onion, but it was way better than this. <laughs> like, they're trying to finish this movie that in, in this universe is this giant big budget franchise, and they're trying to do it during COVID. The plot of the movie is fine, but it's one of those where every single thing about it seems so improv to a fault. Mm. And Judd Apatow directed this, and I like Judd Apatow a lot. And he does use a lot of improvising in his movies, but can kind of make, assemble it together to where it works, to where there is mm. this narrative going that you're still kind of <clears throat> buying all of these characters that are, on, that are on screen. This is in the sense that it feels like an entire movie made up of a collection of deleted scenes. Mm -hmm. Scenes don't really have a start. They don't really have a conclusion. They don't really lead into the next scene. You can get like a half hour or 40 minutes into this and not even know what act you're in, what arc you're in, mm -hmm. what what is even happening. It's just, there's not that many jokes in it. It is just a lot of rambling for the sake of rambling. It's what I don't like in so many comedies where the joke is they're just talking a lot or mm. being really rambly. No one is controlling any of the improv. They're just letting them go and be like, well, this is a talented actor, so this is going to look fine if we just dump this in the scene. You know who I think is... It, I'm kind of with you and uh, Judd Apatow. I, I started off liking his stuff. I never loved it, but I liked mm -hmm. it. And the stuff he produced as well and everything... And it, somewhere, something got lost, I feel like. Uh, he's calling me right now to say... I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, that's right, sorry. Um, but, yeah, I think there's something to um, his films. that uh, Something got lost along the way in e either the message or the idea, messages, I should say, or ideas, or just the improv or the comedy. And the person I feel like is still handling it okay. He's kind of on the cusp of going a little too far, but it's still working. He knows how to own it mm. and do it with good people as uh, James Gunn. Oh, I think yeah, yeah. It does it pretty well, where you can tell he's letting people improvise, but it's not just people, it's like, let the editors improvise, or some of the effects people mm -hmm. improvise, you know? Like, you can tell it's like, yeah, I, ha I have a focus, I have these bullet points, but we can kind of play with it a little mm -hmm. bit, you know what I mean? Where I feel like Apatow has this idea... And he's like, and then just improvised and made them laugh really hard on set, and they remember it made them yeah. laugh hard on set, so they're like, okay, let's keep this, because, man, I, re I still remember how hard it made me laugh, so it's going to mm -hmm. make the audience laugh, but the audience isn't there. It's a different experience. Yeah. And it sounds like that's what happened with this. And it's a shame, because you're right. They could have done this like a Be Kind Rewind kind of oh, thing, yeah. where it's like they mm -hmm. just don't have the proper stuff, so they're working with it, and it kind of gets worse and worse, but it creates, like, its own weird charm yeah. from that. Uh, it, but it sounds like it doesn't go that route. <laughs> no, and it's also too long, which, I mean, Apatow movies usually are fairly long, but they're yeah. funny enough to where that's fine, even if I can see parts where it's like, you could probably trim that or trim that, but but overall it still works. This is one where, oh boy, did that length work against it. <laughs> it felt so damn long. <laughs> Number six is one of the movies I watched just to have another movie on the list, but I was curious. I thought I might like it. White Noise. Um, oh. I... <laughs> So here's the thing with these times. I saw the trailer, looked kind of interesting, and I saw your review, went, hmm. But I also said, sometimes we disagree on movies like this. Like, sure. I, I really like a lot of, like, Charlie Kaufman written and directed movies mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but I get why so much. Or, or, like, Tree of Life, that's another one I really like, yeah. and I don't think you're into and stuff, but it's like... I get how someone would, you know, be into that mm -hmm. and be like, oh my god, we just fucking get to the point and stuff like that. Uh, so I was curious to see if this was one of those movies and everything you said about it was right. Uh, there are, and it frustrates me because there are some good ideas in here. Dude, yeah. I like a lot of mm -hmm. this setup on paper, it sounds like it might work. Yeah. But... Man, what you said, I think, was so true. You said that uh, everybody talks the same, so they can't really establish much of a character. Yeah. And I think that's its biggest failings. It, my thought is that this is like a mix between 
uh, a movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it called, a, the, I think it's called The Grass is Always Greener. Oh, right, yeah. It, it, it's like a mix between that, which I thought was very funny yeah. and very clever, and Don't Look Up. <laughs> Do, yeah, in terms don't of look this up. Yeah. commentary and this annoyance that should not be this long and this pretentiousness, and again, maybe in short spurts, yeah. this writing and this dialogue could be funny. Mm -hmm. And even that's a big could, because I really do want to punch half the people yeah. <laughs> talking in this, but the fact that it goes on for whatever, like two hours or however long it, it was, was long, yeah. um, it's just so infuriating. And I know it's intentional with the acting, the way everybody acts, because yeah. this guy's directed like acting masterpiece. Like, even if you don't like the movies, it's like the acting's spectacular. Yeah. So this guy knows how to draw, and this is intentional. But everyone talks like a Shakespearean movie where you can tell the actors don't know what they're saying, so they're overcompensating uh -huh. in different areas. Like, if you're watching like, a Shakespeare film and someone's saying, like, uh, Cometh Andronicus bound with laurel boughs to re-salute his country with his tears. Mm -hmm. And that's supposed to be like a sad line. You know, yeah. but you know, they don't know that, so they're like saying it in a way where I know what I'm saying, but they clearly don't. And all the dialogue in this is like that, which again, you could say is intentional. Because yeah. of white noise, and we're all just going on with our lies, with our bullshit, until something real does happen. We're still trying to cling to the bullshit. Again, it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. But for a whole movie, and for them to reveal almost none of their identity, or when they do, it's still done with that dialogue and that way of writing. It's so obnoxious, and it's so pretentious, and it gets on my nerves so quickly and so constantly that I, it is one of those I kept checking to see how far <laughs> I was. I'm like, oh, Christ. <laughs> I... I didn't like sitting through this at all. I was sitting there going, can I just watch Moonfall instead? <laughs> that movie had moon tentacles. <laughs> it causing the gravity to mess up so much cars can jump floating pieces of bridge. Please just give me that instead. Not this pretentious dreck. <laughs> like, I didn't... It was well made. I was admiring the cinematography. The little background yeah, stuff and yeah. everything. I, and all of that, it's like... And that's why I almost feel bad having it on the list because it's clear this guy is trying something yeah, different from is. what he's used to. And I like films that try something like this when they work. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it's hard to say why something works, but with this, I really think you hit the nail on the head. You just don't care about these people. Yeah. E even like a Charlie Kaufman movie or, um, you know, like Syracuse, New York or, mm -hmm. or uh, Anomalisa or something like yeah. that. Like, I get why people don't, why there's going to be some people who don't like those mm -hmm. movies, but there is like character set up. You can say what these people are about. Totally. In some way you can relate to it. It's just the way the story is told. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, this isn't for me. Uh, but yeah, y you can't get into these. People, like at all Laura said to me after she goes yeah I could tell you weren't enjoying this because <laughs> I wasn't saying anything during it mm. like I might have chuckled a couple of times but like I probably just the way I was sitting like do you have a, a sit when you're not enjoying something I was probably sitting there like this I, I think it's about like, the same yeah like, especially <laughs> especially when I don't have someone to watch it with that's the worst I'm just like oh, god damn it <laughs> part of way of water was like that with me just like oh, god damn it but again <laughs> at least it looked pretty I could oh, at the yeah, very yeah. least be like okay at least I know I'm gonna get like you said a good theme park attraction here <laughs> yeah they should see the white noise if it had a spectacular 3D I could have at mm. least given it a B plus <laughs> I feel like, real quick I feel like Adam Driver was it him? Just did a movie similar to this, and maybe it came out this past year too, and I liked it just enough where he gives, like, his wife gives birth to, like, a puppet, like a singing puppet. I missed that. And, and maybe it was the year before. I think it was called, like, Alice. It was, like, some girl's name or something like yeah. that. Uh, on the poster, they're, like, dancing on, like, this uh, uh, tidal wave and stuff. And that's an example of, again, too long, but it's like, this works just enough for me. This is interesting. I'm legit invested in what these people are going through. It's mm. a bizarre musical. It plays up a lot of stuff. Um, but I feel like if that movie kept going and didn't know when to stop, mm. it would be white noise. <laughs> yeah. And again, the Michael Keaton white noise is far superior. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is... <laughs> well, I mean... I guess you could probably say a lot about this. One of those isn't pretentious. That's Jeepers Creepers Reborn. 
<laughs> another movie I somehow saw in theaters. <laughs> like, it had, a, like, a two-day Fathom event screening Surprised or something. Surprised it made it that far. <laughs> Dude, watching this on the big screen was ridiculous. Because it is... Practically everything is green screened in this. Mm -hmm. Right down to the background in an antique shop. <laughs> it's, it's about a group of people. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's it's trying to reboot, I, I guess, the, the Jeepers Creepers movies. I didn't see the third Jeepers Creepers film. I saw the first two. I don't know how this compares to the third one, which I also heard was bad. But this was... It's... A group of people go to uh, a horror con that's, like, all outdoors for some reason. And then they're, they're like, oh, we're going to give you a bunch of money if you stay in this abandoned house and they go in there and that's where the the creeper is is in there only this movie is so low budget it can't play the jeepers creepers song so they have a sound alike that uses like just a couple of similar words to the to the jeepers creepers song Heebie -jeebies. It, pretty much like uh look at those peepers like it's like something like that and i'm thinking in my head like is this just some other old song and i tried looking it up and couldn't find dick about it. So I guess it's just a sound alike. It has just these really bad CGI death scene spectacles in it where it would look bad on a television, but blown up in the theater was like, it has a finale that's on the roof of this castle and it looks like Boo's Haunted Mansion from Mario 64 <laughs> that they inserted some humans fighting on top of. I was... It sure wasn't. <laughs> it, if they couldn't afford Jeepers Creepers, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it just... It, it would have looked the same if they just put Boo's Mansion in the background of this and said that it was the Creepers Palace. I don't know if this will relaunch the Jeepers Creepers franchise. <laughs> okay, getting to the movies I legit really don't like. Uh, Halloween Ends. <laughs> no, man. That's going on my best list. Yeah, yeah. Um... <laughs> And I get why people are split on it and yeah. stuff like that. Or, I mean, I don't know. Are they... It, it, yeah. it seems like m most dislike it, but even the people dislike it are like, I could see how this could work, you know? And, uh -huh. and, and so could I, honestly. There's a good setup. I would love if this was the setup to just a completely different franchise. Like, there was oh, yeah, yeah. some sort of killer... You know, who killed a bunch of people years past, and yeah. somehow he almost kind of passes on this power just kind of mentally to this other person who's also gone through, you know, who went through something very tragic. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of hated. Everyone kind of wants him to be the monster, so he actually becomes that. There's a good idea in here, but hey, very clearly that's not what we do for the finale of this new trilogy or yeah, whatever you want to call that. it. Yeah. Um, and B, even taking that out of it, there's so many awkward, weird moments that just don't click mm -hmm. for me. Uh, there's one scene where, like, he's talking to, like, his girlfriend. She does this weird thing with her hands like this. I never put together what that was yeah. about. The editing's really odd where, like, Laurie Strode would be talking to this boy and saying, like, you know, I, I know you've gone through I've gone through a lot of stuff, too. It can be okay. If you ever talk to my daughter again, my granddaughter, I will kill you. I was like, wait a minute. What, what happened there? <laughs> like, something was really, really being chopped up. There's so many scenes that were not meant to be funny that made me laugh hard. Mm. I think everyone almost brags about how hard they laugh at the first death in this. That was <laughs> awesome. And it is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was meant to be hilarious, though. I do. You think so? Yeah. I I guess it wouldn't surprise me either way, mm -hmm. but I think it was supposed to be funny. Uh, everything being set up with this character, I mean, because all the focus is on this guy that yeah. is sort of replacement Myers I guess which of course we're not going to accept as a replacement Myers but okay stick with it if you're gonna take a chance on something take a chance on something but then they just abandon it in the last I don't even know it's the last third like the last fourth and yeah. then they bring Myers back to the point where just all the steam is kind of lost you know we already had which I don't I don't understand why the big confrontation for what the sixth time, and we already had one in uh, Halloween H two O that, and then 2018, oh, the 2018, 2016, one. Yeah, yeah, whenever it came out, which was I mean I wasn't a big fan of it, but I'm like all right, this is 
satisfying what people are looking for, they'll get it. I'm just not big into these tropes. But I acknowledge people that are. The movie knows that. It gives you what you're looking for. It does it fine. We didn't need these other two movies. And this one, by trying to have this big climax at the end, which isn't even that big, it's just kind of in this kid wants to put her hand in the garbage disposal. Oh, oh yeah. no, like, that's the big, ooh, mm -hmm. moment, you know, I mean, we're, I mean, the one before, you had a whole cabin, she had, like, a Home Alone set up, yeah. and that's kind of fun, it's giving people what they're looking for. The only thing that was a little enjoyable for me was the uh, the way they finally that was awesome. make it clear that Michael Myers is not They put back. him in a parade <laughs> <laughs> marching through the streets on a car. Which is, I mean, I was already kind of laughing at like, oh, okay, yeah, they're just, the whole town's gonna yeah. let the sheriff's gonna let him do it. But again, I'm like, but all right, that's part of the fun, I guess, whatever. But the way they just so make it clear, no, no, he's... He's not coming back in this franchise, yeah. in this particular version. It's like, There'll okay, be that's... some other. Yeah, like, like, that's kind of fun. But it just did not feel like it was properly built up to. For the final one, I don't get why this is the fun... I don't know, it'd be like in Revenge of the Sith, which also doesn't do their build-up to Darth Vader that great. But let's just say they're focusing on Jar Jar most of the time and barely looking at Darth Vader. Like, why would you do this? <laughs> why would you do this in the big thing before, like, the big finale? It, like, I It would still it. be a better conclusion than Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> Somehow Jar Jar returned. <laughs> <laughs> the big speech. <laughs> I, I liked ends a lot. I get why people don't. But I uh, I had problems with it. Like, kind of the, the same issues you had with, with parts of the climax. Namely being, it, it kind of ditches the Corey stuff a little too easily. And rather quickly, honestly. But I, uh, overall, I enjoyed the movie quite a bit. I, I did like a lot of the characters in it. And I liked how refreshing it, it felt. Like, that it... It was pretty unique in this series, and I admired that about it. Uh, but I do think that it it felt like it was a great second draft of mm. a script. Um, I gave it like a B plus, and there was enough elements in there where I'm like, you've got a lot of great ideas here where this could easily be something in the A category. But there are some of those issues you mentioned where I was like, this could be tightened up a little bit better. This could be... You could elaborate on this a little bit more, not wrap this up so quickly. The chemistry here should be a little bit better between these two characters. Yeah, why is she suddenly dating Corey? Yeah. It's like, I killed a man. She's like, hi. Like, but what? Is it like you're, whatever you're, I forget what Lori is to her. Grandma and Mom. mother. Yeah, Mom, okay. Her, uh, uh, grandma, sorry. Yeah, grandma, you know, like... <laughs> she literally survived, I mean, multiple times. Mm. This guy, this psychopath, and she's like, yeah, no, it's, it's okay to talk to. Like, what is... I? Yeah, I didn't follow that at all. <laughs> yeah, there were some little issues like that, but overall, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I liked it a lot better than Kills, mm. even if Kills is the more quotable of the two. <laughs> Just <laughs> the evil dies tonight. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Li Love lives tonight. And Love they, had, yeah, they yeah. had a spray painted on there. Yeah. Maybe I knew the movie was in trouble when, like, somebody's driving by and I saw that spray painted on the bridge or something. I'm like, uh-oh. And, and they're like, no, this deserves to be brought back. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to get into this. <laughs> I was, it was, it was weird being there just, like, by myself. Mm. Like, because the other two, it was, like, a packed house. This one, no. And it was the first screening of the day. And it was me and... Okay, I guess I wasn't. There, there was like a couple other people in the back, mm. but I was in my head when I was laughing at the beginning. I remember thinking, maybe it's a good thing I'm the only one here. Would I have been the only one laughing? Yeah, <laughs> like, my head, there was about maybe twenty people at mine. There were laughs. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, people were, in the comments said that too. <laughs> there, there were laughs all throughout the movie. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, people were just. I think everyone was on the same page. Like this ain't doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think I was the only one at this movie, too. My number five is Blacklight, the oh. Liam Neeson movie that was, I'm pretty sure it was made during COVID because it is awkwardly shot and edited where the cameras are 
seem to be really obscuring the fact that these actors aren't in the same room together mm. and it'll go for these odd choices and angles if they're just if one person is standing outside the car and looking in through the window at the other it's it's a jarring confusing movie to look at and because of that because the editing is so bad and so cheaply constructed you've got these action sequences that make no logistical sense whatsoever and even the plot I, I couldn't even begin to tell you, like, to make heads or tails about it, especially now talking about it months later. Mm. I had trouble talking about this when I saw it. It has something to do with this government conspiracy where I think evil CIA guy Aiden Quinn is trying to put together this force of people who are getting rid of, who are assassinating keyboard warriors, I think, <laughs> okay. or something like that. But even that, it's like, there's some material there to make an outlandish and over-the-top movie. Mm. This movie, like, it barely touches on any of the subjects that it brings up, and it is just this weirdly cobbled together, almost relic of a movie that is like, this is what a movie looks like when you have to slap it together and shoot it and edit it. Mm. Probably during all of these, like, COVID limitations. Mm. I don't know, but it was ridiculous it was out in theaters. <laughs> like, looking at the editing in Jeepers Creepers Reborn made more sense <laughs> than this. <laughs> but it, it was like, I had to put it on. I, th I think it might have been the only... Oh, maybe not. Maybe there's another one later, but... I, I do know it was it was a theatrical movie that I gave an F to this year. Oh wow! Okay, man, that's impressive. Yeah, usually go pretty low, and I usually F though. That's impressive. I'm like Ebert when it comes to that, where I'm like, what, well, like him with the zero stars? Mm. I'm like, you gotta save it for just the yeah. right movie. <laughs> this was that. Like, it was so it it's got the story and the like. If you look at the trailer, you would probably think like, okay, like this would probably just be just this generic action thriller mm. put out in theaters that's maybe a tax write-off or something. Yeah. <laughs> it will shock you how inept it is. All right. Hmm. <laughs> interesting. I mean, I'm not going to watch it, but it's still interesting. I'll watch it this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, I think this is the one you want me to put on. Uh, Jurassic World Dominion. Yeah, it's yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> this movie sucked. Um... Yeah, and these movies always make a bajillion dollars. I don't totally follow it. I guess just people want to see dinosaurs. Yeah. I'll give it that. The dinosaurs do look good. Mm -hmm. It's probably the best effects I've seen for these movies since the first one. Yeah. The first one's effects still hold up pretty well. And uh, this is the first time where I've seen one and I'm like, okay, it wasn't like quite way of water good where it's like man i just swear i'm looking at 100 percent real dinosaurs right there but it, it was pretty damn close yeah. and, and they were creative looking they gave some feathers and different designs so it's like okay so a, a part of me does kind of get why somebody would be like but the dinosaurs are cool if fair but uh bringing the old cast back did not help they didn't they almost seem like side characters in their own movie. Yeah. I never got into Jurassic World at all. I didn't get into the characters. I didn't get into the weird twists and turns that they have. The worst part of the previous film was that ridiculous subplot about one of the characters being a clone. So, of course, they double down and make her the main character in this and do everything oh. in their power to make her as unlikable as oh possible. This poor actress yeah dude you yeah. know i'm sure she can act great and you know she has that i don't know kind of that aura and that style about her where i'm like man you get her a good script i bet she'd be great yeah you know but in this there's no way to make this yeah work uh the only character i remember being kind of cool was the pilot character in this and thankfully she is in it a fair amount, but then I feel like there's a ton of other characters they're building up. Okay, this is going to be a villain, this is going to be a cool henchman, like this guy and uh, Pratt are going to have like a rivalry, and they get rid of them so quick, and they just it, kick them out in their own movie, and even when the dinosaurs do show up and they'll have a fun little chase scene, they'll still focus on, like, Locust being the big concern in there. They'll still put them in an island far away, even though the last film, hell, even the film previous, was promising us yeah. that they're going to get out into the city, you know, the, a thing that they started in 
2, Lost World, yeah, Lost where World. it's like, okay, but that's only for the ending, saying like, well, maybe there'll be more in the future. And yeah, yeah. It's a maybe, because you only see bits and pieces of it. Uh, the dialogue was terrible. I didn't like it anyone the little twists and turns are stupid mm -hmm. and now they're gonna make uh dodson the bad guy in this and he's a completely different character from the first movie yeah you know like i think he was supposed to be the bad guy in lost world but they you know reneged on that well okay three was the latest you could have done it yeah but you know we till six to make him the bad guy in this and so much so. yeah and i guess they're trying to create like an awkward like character with him like oh isn't he kind of quirky but evil and stuff like that and i'm like i again i give the actor credit for trying to create something with that character mm. but there's just nothing <laughs> there except this attempt at hammered commentary i guess yeah oh it's it's so bad. These three movies are all just a textbook example of how do we make the next one worse? What's the thing that you disliked about the previous one? Brace yourself. We're going to do that shit even more. Like, I felt like such an idiot leaving this movie because, you know, I, I collect those buckets and cups that from the theater. For this. Of course, they had this giant... Jurassic World Dominion bucket and cup, so I'm sitting there watching this movie with that, and then I <laughs> leave this piece of shit movie just with this giant memorabilia from it. Like I should, like if it were a sitcom, I'd be leaving and throwing it in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> like this isn't worth keeping. It. Yeah, yeah, just. just... <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's in the background of my video. <laughs> I think it's part of the fun, though, because don't you have one for, like, Rise of Skywalker? I do. <laughs> I, I mean, do. that's part of the fun. It's, just, it's actually almost more of an honor to have them for the really bad movies. There's more bad ones than there are good ones. I've got one for Dark Phoenix. I've got one. Uh, what are some other bad? I, I know I have a few other a few other ones that are bad behind me. Um, I'll have to look, because it does make me laugh. I'm like, this background is not representative of my, of my taste at all. There's, I think there's a Black Widow one by me. Oh, there's a Wonder There's two Wonder Woman 84s. That it's that good. There's two of them. This is a VOD movie I had to put on there. Maybe it was limited in theaters somewhere. I'm not sure. But it's a movie called Win a Trip to Brown Town. Oh, I think I'm going to be talking a little bit about this. It's the butt sex comedy. <laughs> the one about... It's like two different types of comedy in this. One of which is this sex comedy marriage flick about this bored married couple. And they, they make a bet... Oh, yeah, the bet is whether or not he can lose weight. And uh, kudos to the... The guy who starred in it also, I think, he co-wrote it and directed it. And he did lose a lot of weight as the movie was going on. <laughs> so um, that's the whole idea of the movie, to show if you want to lose weight, just make a film that apparently works. <laughs> Write it in. That's kind of true. That's what, because that's how I lost weight, was for the Cinema Peter Jackson movie. lost weight, too, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> doing the Cinema Snob movie, I was like, yeah, okay, I want to lose some weight for this. And then I did, that was when I lost the weight. Granted, I made the mistake of doing that while production was still, or I didn't start doing it when production was going on, but I was losing some weight as production was going on. So there's bad continuity with how my <laughs> weight looks in that. In this, at least it makes sense. It's about weight loss. So he makes a bet with his wife that he can lose a bunch of weight. And if he loses a certain amount of weight, he can, his wife will let him do her in the ass. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's, the, That's plot. the plot? That is the plot of this movie. And, like, everyone at his work, like, and their friends know about this. And so there's a lot of, like, puns and bad jokes and stuff like that throughout it. Like, oh, how many more days till Brown Town or something like that. And like, But then there's a B plot that's like something out of a TGIF family sitcom where it's about their kid who is trying to be potty trained. And he's written like one of the Olsen twins. He's written like a bad sitcom kid character that brings back really old jokes. Like he says, don't tase me, bro, at one point. So it's these... How far back is that go, yeah, man? Dude. It's like, what, 2010, something like that? Yeah, and, and weirdly, I think it was like the second movie last year that I saw that made that joke. I can't remember what the other one was. Weird. But th that one was one. And so it's like... 
two different kinds of bad comedies. One is just this sex comedy that doesn't work. The other is this, like, sassy kid comedy that's just obnoxious. And I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, okay, I'll... Some of these VOD movies I'm leaving off, but when a trip to Brown Town, that's that's unique enough to where, yeah, I'll go ahead and put it on the list. <laughs> Number three for me is uh, Fantastic Beast 3. That was bad. Yeah, I, well, I had to watch the first two films in order to watch this one. The first one, I liked the stuff with the baker and his... Um, uh, girlfriend Ed, who eventually become his girlfriend Ed. The rest I didn't care for, but it's fine. You know, like, kids can watch it, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's just see some neat beasts and whatever. But, yeah, okay, so there's something I legit liked it. The second one is awful. <laughs> like, even the stuff with, like, the baker is just horribly done. Yeah. And then you have this third one that just suddenly decides to turn into, like, a political thriller. Because, I don't know, J.K. Rowling just thinks like she's writing, like, these super, super adult stories. And, uh, you know, Harry Potter's fine, you know, I don't yeah, with Harry yeah. Potter and stuff like that. But when she really tries to grow it, I don't know, this is important, this is meaningful, this is blah, blah, blah. I really like it less and less. Yeah. And the idea of, like, let's find some fantastic beasts and a neat little creature. It's fun, cool. Mm -hmm. Again, I like the baker in those stories because he just I wants to open a goddamn... A bakery and yeah. good for him he falls in love with this you know charming weird woman and it's like awesome i really like the romance and then they they split in the second one get i think back together in this one i don't even remember exactly how it ends they write out uh the main lead uh in a, not a remy but the uh the woman in it mm -hmm. uh who i think was a cop or something like that she's just out of it makes a little brief appearance it's all political talk. It's all trying to be really, like, dark and risque. Like, yeah, here's this little animal that's supposed to choose the next political leader, which is insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why even, like, campaign for mm -hmm. this? I, I, I don't follow it. And it's like, well, we're going to sabotage this. There's no protection around this damn animal. It's just Eddie Raymond finds him, like, you know, on a mountaintop or whatever. It's just, yeah, okay, that's the, the, the only one. It's got to decide the future of... Uh, Magic and pol politics, okay. But then, like, they get this thing, they kill the mother, and I think there's, like, another one or something, whatever, and they have to hypnotize it in order to choose the leader they want. Okay, this is stupid, but whatever. Well, they're gonna, again, hypnotize it, magic, whatever. No, no, you gotta slit his throat first, because we're aggressive. J.K. Yeah. Rowling's dark, man. And I just, I don't know, dark J.K. Rowling is so boring to me. <laughs> it's more that, like, it runs into the problem that I see with other, like, novelists doing screenwriters not all the time but sometimes whereas all three of those movies i could see working perfectly fine as books um because and they're she, not right she wrote them just for yeah, they're, yeah yeah they're screenplays i could see them all working as books she is a great novelist she's a great world builder mm -hmm. but in automatically kind of doing all of these as screenplays it really is just, it's not very focused. It's its a lot of exposition. A lot of talking. Yeah, a, a lot of just kind of, maybe not randomness, but there's not a great flow throughout it. Like, there are a lot of things where it's like, this could work as a book because you could elaborate on this mm. a lot more. To kind of automatically just kind of keep doing them like this as screenplays, it just doesn't work there's something just missing in in, in all of them um and they are it, it's it isn't like with the three jurassic world movies where it's like they just keep progressively getting worse with each one well i mean there is that but also it's, <laughs> it's more that it, it, it's more it's frustrating in this regard because this has a lot of elements where i'm like i could see all of this working if this was a book and someone else was adapting it into a script, I could see these same plot points all working in a movie, and it's just not. They're all just kind of bad for similar reasons. Well, even like the Harry Potter books, uh, or the stories, I should say, they do focus on Harry Potter. It's called Harry Potter. Yeah. He is the focus. This is called Fantastic Beasts, and literally in the second one, they're like, we don't care about the beasts anymore. And then the third one, there's just one mm -hmm. that they're trying to focus on and that's it and mm -hmm. 
I feel like, again, just somewhere she didn't have an idea what this was supposed to be or, or whatever she's you know, going through. She's like, well, I'm in a bad mood. I'm writing that into, you know, the movie or whatever. Uh, and it just comes across as very dull, boring, not an interesting world. I guess I don't... What I do like about the Harry Potter story is, is it did start off for little kids, but there was a world, a very clear world created. Oh, yeah. And then they would add on top of it. I have issues with how much was added, how long the books go, and even how much they kind of want to grow up the kids in that yeah. time. But I get it's still totally fine. It's still yeah. serviceable and stuff like that. It works. It, it, it functions, and there's good things in it. I just don't see that as, like, her strength, though, when she wants to make something really adult and really grown up. But it's like, it, it's still wizards and magical words and fantastic beasts and... I think she kind of realized, well, if I'm going to do this, I have to put a lot of that more to the side, and people have to just sit down and talk about shit that's really adult and mm. boring, because that's what grown-ups do, and it's like, you can be adult and not be boring. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, totally. And the others, just at the end of the day, they have rewatchability factor to them. Mm. Like, the Laura, Harry Potters, you mean? Yeah, the Harry Potters, yeah. Laura and I went back through, and uh, I mean, she grew up with mm. them. I didn't see them until, like, way later. Uh, but she grew up with those movies, and we went back and rewatched them just like last December. And for world building, storytelling, uh, character development, they all hold up, and they're fun to kind of rewatch. Mm. Some are better than others, but overall, there's a big yeah. overarching thing there that totally works. These. I'm not going to rewatch any of these. Oh, why would anyone go back yeah. to watch these movies? Yeah. <laughs> there's not it, nothing that clicks like it just doesn't click if the baker was the main character i would totally rewatch these totally movies totally agree with that because i like him he's i like him a lot he is my favorite part of the three movies mm. like that's what i mean it's like these movies they do have stuff there they have elements there you could see where they could work if they focused on this more or tighten this up more and they just don't mm. like they're frustratingly mediocre to yes. me. <laughs> that's a good way to play frustratingly mediocre because you're yeah. like oh this it's so close. <laughs> okay, this is two movies. I mean, it don't make sense. It's the two 365 days sequels. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'm like, okay, those will combine into one because they're barely one movie. <laughs> <laughs> like the second one, the second one tricks you in the one of them. Okay, one of them's called 365 days this day. The other's called the next 365 days. I honestly can't remember which one was called which. <laughs> but the second one will kind of trick you in that a majority of it is just nonsense. It's just a lot of montages, a lot of music played over various scenes. There's not that much dialogue. There is barely any story. Any story that they set up at the end of the second one is quickly resolved, or at the beginning of the first one, is quickly resolved at the beginning of this. But then it goes into this batshit soap opera twist territory in the last like 15 minutes that brings in an evil twin brother and there's a twist with some other characters there's this shootout so it fools you into thinking like oh man the third one's gonna get even more crazy than this but again the third one just wraps up everything from this one everything's fine nothing happened this is three movies where a majority of the plot is just in the first film and then the rest of it, all it is, is just like you're watching travelogue footage. It's just montages. <laughs> is it at least nice travelogue footage? I mean, yeah, but it's the same. Like, mm. it's nightclubs, and it's Sicilian scenery. Mm. Like, and yeah, I saw that picture. Show me some yeah, more. Yeah, show me some more. I'm starting to get bored of all <laughs> the boobs in this shot now. <laughs> like... <laughs> This plot was more interesting when, the, when it was the first movie, and the first movie was terrible. Yeah, the, first, right there. the first movie is just like a rape fetish film mm. where he kidnaps her and is like, you're going to love me after a year. So, of course, in the end of the year, she does. Mm. But then it gets rid of all that, and all it is is just these montages of driving cars or going to nightclubs or being on the beach or this silly, like, sex scenes, one of which he's hitting golf balls inside of her. Even that is, they don't, 
that happens near the beginning of the second movie and it doesn't get any more extreme than that. Mm. That's another time where it fools you, where it's like, oh shit, what's going to be happening next? Is he going to be throwing footballs in her now? <laughs> no. They never have a movie where they go see a therapist? <laughs> of course, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why? There's nothing wrong with us, clearly. <laughs> They're because they get their marriage advice from win a trip to Brown Town. That's what it is. Like, if I keep you here for 365 days, I'll lose weight and I can fuck you in the ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is more plot than anything in any of these movies. It was it made for really easy cinema snob episodes mm. because nothing happens. All it is is just like I'm making fun of montages. Like, mm. okay, what do I do? I know, I'll put the Green Acres theme over it. <laughs> sure. I'll make an ongoing joke about that. It was kind of like I was on vacation for a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, they they were tedious to sit through. And with these sequels, they're so bad that you're like can we bring back the rape plot <laughs> <laughs> at least something was happening but it was yeah. crazy and terrible <laughs> if you look at like a list of just the songs in all these it's extensive it's like looking at the cast list for like it's a mad mad mad, mad world <laughs> like, did you see any of these? No, I heard a little bit about They just sounded like another Fifty Shades of Grey kind of yeah. thing. And I figured they were about as yeah, exciting. Um, that sounds like I was kind of right. <laughs> the, the first one... The Fifty Shades I don't think ever went illegal. This is very clearly illegal. And uh, yeah, I can... Did it get attention because people were kind of looking at the plot saying, like, Jesus, that sounds like that's kind of insane. Like, you know, you can have someone rape them and then they like it, like Stockholm or whatever, stuff like that. And it's romance. It's anyway, Fifty Shades, at least it's just, they seem to be consensual, you know, about it. Oh, there's contracts. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, like, yeah. It's, you know, super consensual, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. There's negotiations. <laughs> in this, I will say, at least in this, I mean, it may... The character in it is a criminal. Mm -hmm. Like, he is, like, a crime boss or something like that. So it is it isn't like he's just some businessman or uh. something like that. So it, it does have... The first one is at least so outlandish. Like, I could see someone watching it purely as just, like trash like you'd mm, be, be smart, yeah, yeah yeah just like you're you're reading like a trashy novel or mm, something like that yeah i could see that kind of enjoyment out of the first one mm. i totally can the sequels no way like nothing happens, nothing in happens them. Them. uh okay so it's not number one but the way you're waiting for the netflix texas chainsaw mass oh number two yeah <laughs> yeah uh you know it's funny because i didn't think i would put it number two but just the more i kept looking at the list i'm like no, I hate it more than that, and I hate it more than that. Yeah. Is right. this really number two? Okay, I guess it's number two. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't finish it. Oh! <laughs> there was about a half hour, 20 minutes left. I'm like, it's not worth it. <laughs> it, it it's not gonna... I, I also was told what happens at the end. I know that. The head, uh, the... Yeah, yeah, and it's one of those things where I'm just like, okay, dumb. <laughs> I, yeah. I guess I knew, like... Well, things aren't going to change around with that. You know, that's not going to win me over. I'm just going to uh, say, oh, that's even dumber. Uh, so, but yeah, it's one of those, I, part of it is I just discovered, I shouldn't say discovered because I knew what it was, but I finally saw all the way through the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Maybe, oh. Okay, I say just, but I think it was like five, six years ago. So oh, like I got yeah. <laughs> But I didn't grow up with it. Yeah. And I was so impressed by it and, and just the insanity of it, how it just got crazier and crazier and crazier, and it mm. wasn't just what was happening, it was the way it was shot, the way it was edited, the pacing, and everything just felt like putting you in a more and more uncomfortable world that you almost had to laugh at, because mm -hmm. you were just so in a weird place, and the climax just kept building on top of that, it got crazier and crazier until it builds up to that last crazy ass shot where they're driving she they're driving away she's <laughs> oh it's great yeah she's yeah. laughing and the guy that she's on ah, mm -hmm. it just ends there and I just never saw anything like it yeah and to see it I never did see the sequels I hear some of them can get pretty crazy as well oh yeah in, in, in a different way there's some that are very fun uh, and, and some are just stupid run of the mill whatever but here's something where it's like okay they're doing 
they're at least given the impression they're going to do something a little different with it, or, or it's the return of blah blah blah, you know, it, it clearly trying to cash in on, like, the Halloween reboot with kills and ends and stuff like yeah. that, bringing back, you know, like an old character and stuff like that, and it's so stuck, it's so boring, and the few things they try to do differently that you would think wouldn't fit in this world, but okay, maybe there's something you can play around with, like the insanity of these influencers going to this, you know, terrible town where, you know, there's a psychotic killer hiding out there and stuff like that, and people are just, leave it alone, leave it alone. You know, maybe there's something there, very, very loose maybe, but yeah. you could do something, and it's just... So generic, so forgettable, and so unlikable to a point where I thought the setup was... And maybe it is, I don't know. There's a weird... I shouldn't say weird, but interesting new thing now where it seems to be the big hot thing to do is put rich, new age, you know, sort of uppity, pretentious people together and they get their comeuppance. I think of Glass Onion, I think of the menu, yeah, I, I yeah. think of that bodies, bodies, bodies. Yeah. And everyone knows that the, the narcissist put all the well off narcissists in a movie and either kill them off or have them get their comeuppance, you know, as something like that. And they're kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have varying results, but it's like, okay, I, I feel like people are liking these movies because they see them more and more, especially with social media and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not even sure if that's what they're trying to do here, because I don't know if, are the teens supposed to look like bad guys, or is the town full of the people with the guns and stuff, are they supposed to be the bad guys here, it's not smart enough to have, like, this gray area where it's like, well, they're kind of wrong about something, kind of wrong some things. Maybe they'll find a middle ground or whatever. I mean, there's clearly no writing in there, even when they have an opportunity. Like I said, we're talking with uh, the survivor of a school shooting and our guy who, again, lives in a very dangerous town in the middle of nowhere, you would get why he would have guns. Yeah. You know, uh, totally. So I thought, man, if they could just sit down and really goddamn talk, wouldn't that be interesting? And I don't know what they have to do with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but you could write it enough in a way where there'd be a connection. Yeah. I'm sure. You know, again, kind of a different uh, angle. You know, again, maybe doing what Halloween ends, in my opinion, was trying to do, you know, kind of with taking a different direction. Yeah. But it was just so forgettable, so generic, and anything I do remember in it was not good. <laughs> and, and it was frustrating, and it was aggravating, like I said, to a point where I'm like, why am I wasting my time with this? I know what's going to happen. I know I'm not going to like it. I know it's not going to be good. I finally just gave up at the last, like, 20 minutes. <laughs> After the big bus scene. And again... You at least I, saw the bus scene. Then. Yeah, so I yeah. did get to the bus scene. But what frustrated me with that is I'm thinking, man... Imagine this in the original Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre with that director, where instead of, like, the blue lights inside and the neon lights and, and kind of shaking the camera and stuff like that, and, you know, kills are not bad, but I'm thinking, man, this could be, like, terrifying. Like, oh, yeah. Like, Leatherface yeah. in a bus with your main characters yeah. with a chainsaw. It's all crowded and cramped and, and, like, really trying to fight the guy off it, but instead it's just done like any other horror film kill, you know, with that scenario, uh, which is still not a bad scenario, but I'm just thinking, man, if the original was doing it, where you just kind of felt like you were really there, and mm. it was cramped, and it was uncomfortable, and you felt the heat and everything, uh, wouldn't that have been, like, just a terrifying setup? And he, and even if it went more comedic with Toby Hooper directing it, he could still do that, too, because mm. he directed, he also directed the second one, which is more of a comedy, it's kind of like you know the Gremlins too. That's why really, yeah. like, and it, and it works. It's very entertaining and very funny. So, if you had with the voice of him, or at least someone on like him on par with him, there are two different tones they could do very well. Whether it's scary or whether it's something very darkly funny, and this one didn't do either well and but especially with like the influencers you're right because Leatherface has just this crazy goddamn family and this crazy yeah. history and stuff I mean especially the obsession with true crime now oh, internet's yeah, loose yeah. and stuff like uh -huh. that I think about you could do it that but, but they don't do that yeah yeah, and also, I don't think Netflix cared that much about this movie mm. because I got a screener for it and I didn't think 
this, they were going to send me an early screener for it. I thought, like, okay, this is going to be one where they, like, just don't even respond. Uh. And be like, uh, you can watch it Friday when we air it. But no, they, they did. They sent me a screener for it, like, uh, fairly early on, I think. I think I wrote back, too, and was like, yes, yeah, is, is there an embargo for this? And they're like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't put a watermark on it. It's like, dude, release it online. We don't even give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> if, yeah, yeah. if you could bootleg this, that, that's, that's fair as <laughs> from, from having to release it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, no. I, I was wondering if we'd have one that was that was on both of our lists, and I figured it would probably be that one because mm. these next two, I don't, I don't think you saw my number two. Did you see Amityville Thanksgiving? I did not. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's a movie that has nothing to do with Amityville and nothing to do with Thanksgiving. <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> no, that would I would at least been like you wanted well, to Garfield Christmas it's didn't you? some kind of it's some kind of holiday movie like no this was one where like I was thinking I was like do I put it on here because it's barely a movie but it's so cynically put out there to get you to watch it because of the title mm. that was why I watched it that was why I reviewed it. Like, that's why I review a lot of those VOD mm. movies, specifically based on the title. Mm. When a Trip to Brown Town, the Humpty Dumpty one, and this, Amityville Thanksgiving. It's another one. <laughs> you know, I know it's not called the Humpty Dumpty one, but wouldn't it be hilarious if it was? The Humpty <laughs> like, there's Dumpty so many one. of these. Just, the Humpty Dumpty and one. Might as well. I didn't realize until <laughs> I was halfway through that movie that it was a sequel. The, this one, it's, it's one of those where it wraps up the loose plot that it has about 45 50 minutes into it and mm. the rest is just like cell phone footage of people describing plot points oh, that's like, obnoxious i know yeah, that, that's like the new thing with like some on-demand movies where it's like oh damn it one of these it's one of those mm. it's i've seen a few like it uh like uh the murder hornets one i think mm. was like that there there was one called 5g zombies i think was like that this one isn't all like that but like the last act of it is and it's kind of sprinkled in throughout it there'll be things going on and it'll just cut to two guys shot exactly like this yeah <laughs> two guys just again describing plot points and the plot of it it, it feels like something that it already existed and just they called it, it did amityville and thanksgiving and they <laughs> <laughs> well it at the at the be the opening credits are like just like stock footage of the town of amityville they might mention at one point like oh we're in amityville same with it being thanksgiving because the actual plot of it is about this evil couples therapist or this, this marriage counselor who he he's like a cult leader kind of where he it's original <laughs> yeah he like seduces these couples into or talks these couples into always going on these retreats with him and then they get sacrificed or something like that and he he'll like it'll get paranormal i think where one will try to kill the other something like that and i think they meant they say at one point like Oh, it's also Thanksgiving week. Like, that's, <laughs> like, there's nothing in it beyond that. There's no evil turkeys in this. There's mm. no Thanksgiving dinner. It's just like, oh, let's go to this couple's retreat. We're on Thanksgiving break. <laughs> <laughs> Lame. I know, right? Like, Thanksgiving movie's bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah, my number one, I feel like I had to have this be number one because I think it was aiming to be number one. Uh, Pinocchio, a true story. <laughs> and I thought about it because sometimes when I'm rating these, I try to think to myself, well, what's the movie trying to accomplish? What's it, what's it trying to do? Because I'm thinking, like, I'll, I'll give old, like, a star and a half or something, but I'll say, see it, it it's hilarious, it's oh, wonderful. Because yeah, yeah. I think he's trying to make a serious movie. But something like Space Jam 2. I don't think they care. I think they just want you to be entertained and they kind of laugh at what an obvious advertisement this is. Yeah. That's what happened with me, so I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll give mm -hmm. it like three stars, you know, kind of thing. Uh, something like this is kind of both, because I'm like, well, clearly the people who dub this didn't give a shit. And they didn't give a shit in the most entertaining way. Oh, they hired hardcore. the exact wrong people to get a hilarious production 
but I think the people who made the original in Russia did care. <laughs> and they yeah. put this together. No, we're going to tell like a good story. And they were terrible at mm. it. So that's what's making a count on this list. I've seen both versions of it. Mm. And you're right. When you're watching the, uh, the original version of it, there's even two English versions. And you can tell it's like they're, they're sort of taking it seriously. And because of that, it's, it's a boring sit. Mm -hmm. Whereas you get the Pauly Shore one. It's amazing. It's so good. It, it's phenomenal. <laughs> and I think the fact that the movie is so bad, and then you put Pauly Shore's voice on top of it, and John Heater. I really don't want to discredit John Heater here. Yeah. Uh, too. Uh, very funny, going in and out of this horse voice that sometimes he has. And I don't even think everyone gets his name right. Sometimes it's Tybalt or Tybalt. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> or Tybill. And it's like they never get the name right, and... It's it's a masterpiece. It is just so entertaining from beginning to end. That woman's accent, whether the sorceress or whatever the hell she is, who has like a British, French, Scottish, Irish accent, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or sometimes a Jersey accent, yeah. which is so funny. Uh, and it's just so hilarious. I feel like they would take it as a badge of honor to be the oh, number yeah. one worst film I, on a list. Because you can tell that's what they're... It'd be like giving uh, Freddy Got Finger, like, the worst uh, oh, of yeah, the year. Yeah. You know, and he showed up to the Razzies and he brought his little red carpet. Yeah. And he said, no, I, I made this to win a Razzie. I feel like they're doing the same thing. So it's yeah. like, I'm saying it's the worst of the year, but see it. Oh, yeah. My God, see it. I mean, I, I feel like that's, again, that's the honor that they're going for so people would check it out. I, it didn't make mine because it, it is in that, I had to put it in that category mm. of some of the ones I mentioned earlier, like Grim Cuddy and a yeah. few of those where I'm like, I did get some enjoyment out of this. And this movie just made me fall in love with Polly Shore again. <laughs> yeah, it did the impossible, what I thought yeah. was impossible. Uh, I, I shouldn't say that. I, I see him on interviews and Joe Rogan, so he seems like a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he seems really sweet and yeah. everything. But, you know, yeah, that type of humor mm. uh, where I, I just could not get into... <laughs> that the weasel. Voice, the delivery, all that stuff. I'm just like, yeah, nope, can't yeah. do it. But... It, this they found the magic pairing you yeah. have him as Pinocchio mm -hmm. in this in the story that's terribly written but you can tell is trying to be genuine it's just terrible yeah. at it. and it's it's hilarious it, it's phenomenal they really hit like this genius combination and it, he made it quotable too yeah like, you can quote this movie it's good to, it's good to, it's good yeah that's what I, <laughs> I want to be big. on my own I have a whole world to see it, it's one of the few films where it's the first one in a while because anytime there's like a new whatever the new Neil Breen or the new uh, Tommy Wiseau or something like that a lot of times it's like, oh, okay, this type of thing, okay, whatever. And with this one, there was just this breath of fresh air, like, man, this is a new, fun kind of bad. Mm -hmm. And it was something where it's like, it was kind of in front of us the whole time. God, we've seen things like this, like these straight-to-video or, or streaming yeah. movies with sort of these D-list celebrities that aren't doing much anymore. So, like, yeah, yeah, let's just use them for this or whatever. Could use the paycheck. But the fact that they knew that's what it was, and they're like, let's just have fun with this. Let's yeah. go complete opposite direction. You could tell the people dubbing it were aware of it and were like, yeah, no, I get it. I get the joke. Mm -hmm. Let's have fun. It's just... Such a treat. <laughs> and he embraced it, too. Over 100%. On his Twitter page. Yeah. He was doing videos where he was reading, like, fan letters and stuff like uh, that. Good on and, him, man. Yeah. That's awesome. It was great. Like, there was there was another one, too. It was, like, My Secret Monster, I think is what it was called, uh -huh. where it was him back dubbing. He was the villain in it. Uh -huh. He's not in it as much as he's in Pinocchio, but those parts in that monster movie... It made it worth watching for the same reason uh. as Polly Shore and another animated, like, Russian movie like this mm. one was. And your number one's way more watchable than mine. <laughs> I put... I, I was... For a while, I was thinking Amityville Thanksgiving was number one, which, which really, like, in some instances it is. But this next one is number one in that it is also an incomplete movie but this one I have at number one because I saw it in theaters mm. I went into it 
knowing it was from the same director who made um, the Trump Prophecy. Mm. Oh, okay. Now I know the movie you're talking about. It's got okay. a generic okay. title. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, so it's from the director of that. But he also directed another movie too like, before that that was called God's Compass. That, that wasn't very good, but it was just kind of mediocre. So mm. going into this, I didn't know like this is just kind of going to be mediocre. That's what I thought going in, and so. It's a movie where part of it is about a cop who's shot in the line of duty and then is in the hospital and has to get better. That's dropped about halfway into this. Mm -hmm. There's two things going on, and they're both kind of sprinkled in with each other. There is that. And then there is another story about a firefighter with PTSD, mm -hmm. and it's the same actor from The Trump Prophecy. And... At first, I'm going like, okay, he's like bowling with his friends, whatever. Then he gets called to this this fire. I'm looking at the fire footage going, this all looks really, really familiar. Like, wait a minute. This is just stock footage from the Trump prophecy. But I kind of wrote it off at first. It's mm -hmm. like, well, they're just reusing some effects. This is a low-budget movie. But no, half of this movie is stock footage of that plot from the Trump prophecy, just re-edited and inserted into this other movie. And I'm going, I haven't seen that in a long time. Like, not since, like, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, mm. or uh, the Merlin movie from Mystery Science Theater, yeah. where half of it was stock footage of, a, of an older movie. This one, and it, it, this one's confusing about it, because I'm thinking in my head, like, his character's name is the same from the Trump prophecy, and I'm sure only because... The, his fireman outfit has his name on the mm. back of it. But then it's confusing because his wife is called something else. <laughs> like, so, on the one end, I'm like, uh, was this made because at the end of the, or in the Trump prophecy, it's like, all right, everyone is enabling this character. This character has some serious problems. He's got, like, PTSD or something. He's saying he's seeing these balls giving him election advice and things like that but he goes to see these quacks that are like oh my god you're our prophet like everyone is just enabling this man who needs help in this <laughs> i'll give it this if this was the intent then okay in this it almost retcons that or no it doesn't almost do it it does okay this so is he like trying to atone a little bit and yeah. like, like like this is like his group therapy kind of thing yeah, like the cruise is group therapy <laughs> yeah this cuts out all of the god orb supernatural stuff from that it cuts out all the, oh, the stuff that stuff. makes sense of course. you're right yeah <laughs> all of the political stuff in this is gone it, it's like cobbled together footage of the ptsd parts from the trump prophecy but when this ends it does have his visions come towards him. Not mm -hmm. the orb stuff or the political stuff, but, like, the PTSD demons. Mm -hmm. Like, these fire demons that are, like, under his bed and stuff like that. I, I seem to recall that was in this one again. Mm -hmm. But what this movie does instead is at the end, he goes, you know what, I got a lot of problems. I need to go see a therapist. And, <laughs> help. and then he does in the movie ends. <laughs> So I'm like, I, so was this like this quasi remake where the director's like, maybe I should give better advice here? I mean, maybe. That's what I think. I feel like maybe he feels like, I mean, I don't know how many people saw Trump Prophecy, but I know, I remember seeing advertisements for it. It was like a Fathom event yeah. right, or something like that. So I'm like, okay, well, we know people will go see it. So maybe with this one, you know, the guy who made the Trump Prophecy or something like that, maybe this is his way of being like, Okay, I'm just, I'm having something out there that says, you should get help, because I realize, like, maybe January 6th happened, and he was getting his Viking helmet on, and then he looked on the news and went, oh, maybe I should put this down, <laughs> okay, uh, maybe I should make another movie, I got no budget, oh, uh, well, that won't stop me, I can do this. Uh, like, that's the only thing I can figure, which it's like, I mean, okay, g good? I mean, I guess that's better than, again, climbing the, you know, walls of the Capitol there, but, uh... <laughs> Doesn't make for a good movie. <laughs> or it's just something cheap they wanted to throw out there. Like, I mean, they didn't advertise that this was from the same director. Mm. Maybe because of that crowd... They, say, they, would, they would recognize it's the same movie just yeah. cobbled together again. But I saw both movies in the theater. When I saw Trump Prophecy in the theater, it was a packed house. Mm. Uh, this one... Uh, I was the only one there. <laughs> it was an empty screening. I was the only one there. And I was just fascinated. I was like, 
this has got to be my number one because regardless of intent of this, this is a stock footage movie. Yeah. It's a stock footage movie that's out in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy to me that that happened. Um, sometimes just... We kind of talked about it earlier. There will be some old cliches that we never thought we'd see again so many years later, and that happened with this. Wouldn't it be hilarious if they pulled, like, a Quackbusters and it just cuts to a Daffy Duck cartoon? Yeah, like, yeah. halfway through, it's like, oh, it's interesting, Daffy, tell me more. It just cuts to mm -hmm. a cartoon, like the old Looney Tunes movies. Yeah, and those I loved. I love yeah. those, like, Disney movies, or uh, the Looney Tunes like compilation movies because like sure you can tell when it's the new footage and when it's not especially the difference in yeah. Mel Blake's voice in some of them but at the end of the day it's like well you're still seeing a collection of a bunch of great cartoons mm. and it's kind of interesting to see how they're working it together in this plot in this no I'm going to theater to see recut Trump prophecy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me quackbusters any day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that was my number one um well now i gotta start now i'm pretty sure i've still already got 10 movies like that would be already on the right list for, that would be all, already on the list for next week. i gotta go see a movie sometime this week that's it's playing in theaters it's about they find jesus's dna and they're trying to clone him so he can fight uh, against like the Antichrist or something, and it, it, I don't know. Sounds like fun, actually. I know. I can't wait. I think it's called the Devil's Conspiracy. You sure it's not going to be on like the best of list or something? It like might. That? Come on, it could. <laughs> like I've got that movie, and I've also got like the Sorbo Left Behind movie is coming out this month too. Oh, they're making another. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Man, if you can't get it right with Cage, you can't get it right. It's a sequel to that one. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. But Cage right. didn't come back for it, so it's Sorbo. Like, <laughs> like, well, he took over for The Rock and The Walking Tall sequels. Get Sorbo in here and <laughs> pick up where we left off. Javelin, oh. you got, you got anything to say? What's your worst of the year? What's your worst of the year? It's Junkyard Dogs. <laughs> Or that, uh, was it that Home Alone sequel, but with dogs? Was that on the list? Was that on? Junkyard Dogs. Oh, is that the one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Junkyard Dogs almost made it, but it was... Okay. It well, was, well, that's my worst film <laughs> of the year. Right that was here. why I took it off. That was why I took it off. So Chaplin. It would be a Chaplin. Yeah, so that was one where it was like, this is too much like some other movies I've seen recently. I'll leave <laughs> off junk, Junkyard Dogs. But thanks a bunch for watching, everyone. See Take you care, next man. year. <laughs>